All right, Symposium of Plato, this guy, man here, I uh, continued. The Speech of Phaedrus. Love is a great God, wonderful in many ways to gods of men, and most marvelous of all is the way he came into being. We honor him as one of the most ancient gods, and the proof of his great age is this. The parents of love have no place in poetry or legend. According to Hesiod, the first to be born was chaos. But then came earth, broad-chested, a seat for all, forever safe, and love. And Acusilios agrees with Hesiod. After chaos came earth and love, these two. And Parmenides tells of this beginning. The very first god she designed was love. All sides agree, then, that love is one of the most ancient gods. As such, he gives to us the greatest goods. I cannot say what greater good there is for a young boy than a gentle lover, or for a lover than a boy to love. There's a certain guidance each person needs for his whole life if he is to live well, and nothing imparts this guidance, not high kinship, not public honor, not wealth. Nothing imparts this guidance as well as love. What guidance do I mean? I mean a sense of shame at acting shamefully, and a sense of pride in acting well. Without these, nothing fine or great can be accomplished in public or in private. What I say is this, if a man in love is found doing something shameful or accepting shameful treatment because he is a coward and makes no defense, then nothing would give him more pain than being seen by the boy he loves, not even being seen by his father or his comrades. We see the same thing also in the boy he loves, that he is especially ashamed before his lover when he is caught in something shameful. If only there were a way to start a city or an army made up of lovers and the boys they love. Theirs would be the best possible system of society, for they would hold back from all that is shameful and seek honor in each other's eyes. Even a few of them, in battle, side by side, would conquer all the world, I'd say. For a man in love would never allow his loved one, of all people, to see him leaving ranks or dropping weapons. He'd rather die a thousand deaths. And as for leaving the boy behind or not coming to his aid in danger, why, no one is so base that true love could not inspire him with courage and make him as brave as if he'd been born a hero. When Homer says that God breathes might into some of the heroes, this is really love's gift to every lover. Besides, no one will die for you but a lover, and a lover will do this even if she's a woman. Alcestis has proved to everyone in Greece that what I say is true. Only she was willing to die in place of her husband, although his father and mother were still alive. Because of her love, she went so far beyond his parents and family feeling that she made them look like outsiders, as if they belonged to their son and name only. And when she did this, her deeds struck everyone, even the gods, as nobly done. The gods were so delighted, in fact, that they gave her the prize they reserved for a handful chosen from the throngs of noble heroes. They sent her soul back from the dead. As you can see, the eager courage of love wins highest honors from the gods. Orpheus, however, they sent unsatisfied from Hades, after showing him only an image of the woman he came for. They did not give him the woman herself, because they thought he was soft. He was, after all, a Cythara player, He did not dare to die like Alcestis for love's sake, but contrived to enter living into Hades. So they punished him for that, and made him die at the hands of women. The honor they gave to Achilles is another matter. They sent him to the Isles of the Blessed because he dared to stand by his lover Patroclus and avenge him, even after he had learned from his mother that he would die if he killed Hector, but that if he chose otherwise, he'd go home and end his life as an old man. Instead, he chose to die for Patroclus, and more than that, he did it for a man whose life was already over. The gods were highly delighted at this, of course, and gave him special honor because he made so much of his lover. Aeschylus talks nonsense when he claims Achilles was the lover. He was more beautiful than Patroclus, more beautiful than all the heroes, and still beardless. Besides, he was much younger, as Homer says. In truth, the gods honor virtue most highly when it belongs to love. They are more impressed and delighted, however, and are more generous with a loved one who cherishes his lover, and with a lover who cherishes the boy he loves. The lover is more godlike than his boy, you see, since he is inspired by a god. That's why they gave a higher honor to Achilles than to Alcestis, and sent him to the Isles of the Blessed. Therefore, I say love is the most ancient of the gods, the most honored and the most powerful in helping men gain virtue and blessedness, whether they are alive or have passed away. That was more or less what Phaedrus said, according to Aristodemus. They had followed several other speeches, which he couldn't remember very well, so he skipped them and went directly to the speech of Pausanias.